what I began to realize and to think about is that in my training, I was sort of, I was trained or kind of, I learned to think about race as something that you could see as a, a variable, right? Like someone would have certain kinds of behaviors or experiences or that would need to be thought of in terms of race. Like in other words, a black or brown client would be affected by racism and then that would be something that we would talk about in therapy. That was something I was prepared to do to some extent. Even that was very, you know, kind of limited and probably, you know, at best superficial, but it was something that came up in my training. However, I was never really trained to think about how I would talk about with a white client that they would be someone who would be, have a certain set of behaviors or thought patterns which would kind of push them towards committing racism, even mm -hmm. if it were unconscious. So it's almost like when therapists are trained to look at race or the history of race or just um, of the racial construct or the racial social contract in America, we're really only trained to look at one half of the problem. And that's mm -hmm. only the people who experience racism. We don't ever really look at the people who commit or perpetrate racism or even just like the, what is like sort of one step removed from racist acts would be like, you know, sort of, enabling a, a, a racialized system, a social system. So I thought that was really fascinating and surprising. And especially, you know, sort of from 2015 onward at the sort of winding down of the Obama presidency, where there was, we went from being sort of post-race to suddenly being like extremely race, you know, conscious um, and racist, you know, overtly in a way that hadn't been going on, at least in the, the public discourse. Um, although I guess even that is something you could kind of debate. Um, I really got curious about how to kind of look at race within therapy with white clients and to understand sort of the white side of things. Mm. And that's what led me to sort of start to research and, and, and begin to like kind of experiment with like, what would it look like to intervene in whiteness, you know, or in the white side of racism in mm. therapy rather than only focus on, um, you know, the experiences of people who experience racism as the people who it is done to versus the people who are doing it. Yeah, I love that you're really sort of highlighting this and laying it out there for us because I think that that's the critical piece that I found is so valuable is that we're really here to interrogate whiteness. And when we interrogate and disrupt whiteness, then we begin to be able to recognize all the ways in which that system perpetuates the inequalities that then live out in the communities of people of color and particularly anti-black racism plays a part in you know things like we're seeing now with you know racism being a pre-existing condition if you will um, for COVID deaths you know for for black and brown people and mm -hmm. that this interrogation is that looking in the mirror before mm -hmm. we're doing much over here you can do both and but that to focus out there and not in here is not sufficient 